gonna do right here is go back. What we're gonna do right here is go back. Go, go back, go back, back, go back, go back, back, go back, go back, back. Way back. All right, and welcome back to another Kuma Style review. I'm TJ Duckett. And what we have here in this very, very big box, for those who can't read what's on the box, it's the Volks company. It's the SRX um, variable box. So it is Super Robot X from Super Robot Wars OG. Um, and the three bots, it comes with the three bots that form that big, big giant robot. Um, and the parts to go ahead and make them combine into the Gestalt known as Super Robot Type X. So this is the out of the box part. I just included the Classics Hound here so you can get an idea of how big the box is. If you don't know how big Classics Hound is, just know that the box is big. But anyways, going ahead and unboxing this. It's actually really exciting. Pretty pricey set. And this is actually the first time I've gotten a chance to unbox it myself. So hopefully everything's here. But I was told that it is new and mint in box. Okay, so, it's a lot of stuff. We'll actually go ahead and fold that down just to give me some leverage here. Looking at this, it looks like this here is a sword. Let's go ahead and put that away. All right, cool. Here's the box for R1. Okay, looks like it turns into R-Wing as well. All right. It looks like this joint parts of SRX, and that once again is the combined form Super Robot Type X. And let's go ahead and keep this going here. These are very tight here in the box. All right, nice. This is R2. Two powered. Okay. As well as. Get this out of the way. These are very tight in here. I wish this box was a little bit bigger, but it's nice that they're tight and compact. And then we have R3. So, we have here, looks like boxes for the three robots. Oops as well as joint parts and accessories for the um, Super Robot X combined form. But anyway, let's go ahead and start taking a look at these figures individually. All right, so for this overview section, I'm just giving you guys a preview of what you're getting in the box. This is a lot of stuff. But honestly, it's not too bad once you get used to playing around with it. First, we'll take a look at the SRX team. Um, if you watch the anime or play the games, you know who they are. But basically, in Super Robot Wars, there are different, not necessarily like alliances, because it's still a pretty clear cut, like good guy, bad guy thing. But the good guys have different groups almost like different branches of the army and things or the military and things like that but these guys are the three members of the um, SRX team whereas the main team is the ATX team and stuff like that but anyway um, they're the SRX team because they become the guest doll known as Super Robot X but anyway we have here in the middle R1 R2 and R3 over on the right hand side there. So alright, you can see they all come with, with stands for themselves. They don't need them to stand or anything like that. Um, but just to make room for everything, I felt like I should just go ahead and put them on there so they stay stable. Now, um, R1 becomes R-Wing, which is a plane. R3 over here can become R3 powered, which is sort of like a plane. You'll kind of have to see it to to get it. It's a plane, but not really, I guess, uh, I don't really know how to say it. Not a traditional plane. So, it's pretty cool, though. And he becomes R2 powered, which he actually is right now. The only difference um, with him, when he becomes R2 
two powered. He gets these um, shields as well as these big blasters on his back. So I'll show you guys all versions of all of these characters. But like I said, this is the overview. So just kind of showing you what comes in the box. Now, as you can see, over on the left-hand side here, there are tons of other pieces for other stands. Even the guest stall himself comes with a huge stand back here. Um, and then there are different parts for the different characters, as well as the guest stalls. You see two giant legs there. As well as a pair of hips. You know, you've got some hands and the head for Super Robot X, you know. And, of course, like I said, different hands and weapons for the individual bots and things like that, too. Now, when it comes to that, as you can see, there's a lot of parts forming that goes on um, to make these guys into their different modes as well as into the guest doll. So, I'm not going to show the transformations for, like, R1 to turn into R-Wing um, and R2 and R3 to become R2 and R3 powered. There's just way too much going on. And realistically, um, it's not fluid, you know? That's just how it goes. These are 100% parts forming transformations, you know? Um, and that's just how it goes. I know a lot of people watching these are Transformers fans, so it's a bit different. But, you know, that's just kind of the name of the game when you get into other toy lines and things like that. But at the same time, they're still awesome, and I am going to show off all of the modes. Um, I'm going to try something different for the um, transformation in, transformation into Gestalt, um, the Super Robot X, the big robot, um, because I do want to show that, because that's that's the big one. But anyway, let's go ahead and get started here. I just wanted to give you guys a preview of, you know, all the different kinds of things that come in the box, and yeah, it's, it's a lot of stuff. But anyway, let's go ahead and look at the individual bots. Alright, and taking a look here, we're going to start with um, R1. He does also turn into R Wing, which is um, his jet or plane mode. But taking a look at the figure itself here first. Okay. Just so you guys can get a look at him from all angles. And the beauty of the Super Robot Wars series is that you get all kinds of mecha designs. And this particular team, the um, SRX team, they are very, very Gundam-like in appearance. And I'm sure I didn't have to say that because it's blatant, but, you know, you'll get them that are of a certain aesthetic, and then you'll get robots that look like they're out of Gurren Lagann and stuff like that. Um, then you'll get ones that look like they're out of Gal Gagar. You know, it's just crazy. Lots of different designs and stuff like that. But there he is. And looking at the posability here. His head's on a ball joint, so he has full range of motion there. His shoulders are on pivots, but the underside of the shoulders can move in and out as well. He does have bicep swivel as well. Okay. And those actually peg into his shoulder blades there. And one thing about this, like quality wise, they're solid. But they're not the same plastic quality as, like, the fig warts and things like that. Um, or especially, you know, the Super Robot Chagokins. No die cast to them. Not extremely sturdy plastic. It's more of a rubbery type deal. I'd say they're just a step below the old Gundam MSIA figures. If anybody, you know, is familiar with those. That's about the best way I can describe it. A lot of modern toys, you know, high-low, even retail toys are uh, quite a bit better than this. Even though they're sturdy, you know, there are just certain things about it. And I'm sure you can even see here with the paint detail and then stuff like that, you know. It's just one of those things I wanted to note really quickly because this is an extremely, extremely expensive set. And I don't want anyone to buy it um, with false expectations but anyway the elbows are double jointed there's one up where it meets the bicep and then one kind of towards the inside of the forearm so doing that okay you got that there alright so 
He does have waist swivel, a bit limited just because of all of the, not necessarily kibble, but you know, like weapons part, it's crotch plate there. All right, ball jointed thighs. All right, no actual thigh swivel, but he's got a lot of range of motion there because of spacing in between his, like where the ball joint is and the actual crotch itself. So that's nice. Okay. Double jointed knees even. So that's pretty cool. All right. And these are ball jointed as well, the ankles. So it does have ankle rock and things like that. Pretty poseable figure. I'm not going to lie. Even though the plastic and paint quality isn't of today's standards, the posability of these things definitely is, I would say. So looking at that, there's that part. I want to go ahead and raise the camera here. And the reason I'm talking about things like the plastic quality as well as some of the you know the other features is because it's going to be universal throughout these and I don't want to have to explain it um, three times throughout this review but one thing that's common amongst um, all of them as well is the fact that usually you'll see hands that pop off and there's a ball joint you know sticking out but these actually just peg in okay so you're not going to see the flexibility or opposability that comes from having a ball joint there. They'll still rotate, but they won't have, you know, that swivel and things like that in the um, hands. All right. So another thing is that for these characters, their weapons actually come with hands attached to them, which I actually like because there's no worry about loosening any fingers, trying to put, fit a weapon in there or anything like that. So here it is. He has the dual blasters from the show, as well as the ability to use one of his knives and his sniper rifle. Okay? So one thing that's cool about this figure is that, alright, let's say I want to go ahead and use, you know, his blaster. One of his blasters. Or two of them. These blasters over here on the side actually come out. Okay? So now... You have the appearance that, you know, he took the weapon out of the holster, which is nice. Alright, so let's go ahead and go with the knife. Alright, so for anybody who's watched the show, played the games, things like that, you know that his knives are actually hidden in here. So what you can do is take this out. Alright, you could take this piece off, just disassemble it. A little bit tight there but there's a replacement one that doesn't have the handle of the knife there and then you just go ahead and fit that back in and boom now you've got the appearance that he's taking the knife out of the holster too which is very cool so they are very well done very intricate and things like that and let me go ahead and Bring the camera down some. Because I want to zoom in on the face so you guys can take a look at that. Alright. Actually get some light on there so you can see the eyes and stuff like that. And you know, decent paint job. But I think, you know, with better plastic quality and not necessarily having to be painted with, you know, just doing the mold itself in different plastic colors and things like that um, would have helped just the quality look of it quite a bit alright so there's a lot of parts forming that goes on um, to make him into our wing like I said at the beginning of this just like all of the transformations let's go ahead and take a look at him in his our wing mode alright and here is our wing A lot of bit of part swap in here, but it does come to be a really nice representation of his jet mode. One piece of advice I will give, take some time with the stand attachment that comes with them for this plane mode. 
because it definitely took me a bit to, you know, pop it on and get it in that absolute, like, perfect spot. It's not really, even though it's made for them, it's a little bit too, not finicky, but you have to place them way too perfectly on there for my taste. For him to balance in plain mode. Right? But there he is. Like I said, a nice representation of that jet mode, and I'm glad that they threw it in. You know, this is where you really start to see the value of this set, um, parts forming or not, but, you know, the fact that they transform into their alternate modes and things like that. So, we'll go ahead and go down the list, and we'll go to R2. Alright, now we're taking a look at R2, which does have its um, R2 powered mode as well. You've got the figure itself here. Extremely, extremely accurate. I love the little Stumpy Bot build. Okay. Alright. In terms of what he comes with, zoom out a bit. He dumb, does come with his extra hands. He has two open hands as well as the one using his BFG as well as things like his shoulder shields his cannons for his back All right as well as his arm packs to become R2 powered so we'll take a look at R2 powered in a moment a lot of those accessories but just taking a look at the figure itself here all right his head's definitely ball jointed for one that essentially kind of has no neck in terms of its aesthetic I'm glad that they do have a lot of posability here in the head area okay so this one has up and down swivel but he doesn't have the in and out when it comes to the shoulders and I'll tell you this leg pack that just came off both of these sides are extremely annoying okay has elbow bend no crazy double joints or anything like that he does have bicep swivel no swivel in the um, wrist itself but if you want you could always just take the wrist and unpeg them then you know Peg him back in. That kind of deal. Alright. No waist swivel. Good range in the thighs though. All directions. Good click. Alright. Just going to leave that off for the time being. Okay. He does have knee bend. It doesn't appear to, but he does. Alright. Not too far, but he has it. Okay. And he also has feet that are on ball joints with really good sized feet themselves so a lot of balance and stuff like that when it comes to this character and just an FYI these pieces that are coming off he has quite a bit of them that comes apart armor wise and things like that to form the um, SRX Gestalt so you can kind of handle that how you want um, you can nail polish these to tighten them up um, I haven't really bothered because these pieces fit fine on the SRX Gestalt which I keep it in, but yeah, there's that. All right, now I don't have to cut out for this transformation because it's not as much of a transformation as it is just adding on armor parts. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and get him to R2 powered. All right, you don't really need this for the powered mode, but I will have him holding his big gun, just pegging out the hand. And you'll see that one pegged out a lot easier because I had never pegged that other arm out. These all, everything comes really tight on these toys. Alright, so there's that. Now adding the packs on his arms, they just peg into the side here. On each side, okay. Now, we will add his shoulder armor. 
and they just peg in like so. Okay, there's that. Alright, and now you'll see that there are two holes by each of the shoulders, and you just take one pack or one cannon and put it on each side. So let me go ahead and get the other one pegged in. And there we have um, R2 powered. This one needs to be pegged in a little bit better. All right, so let's go ahead and put this guy on his stand. And you can see he balances just fine, but if you want to avoid any potential even issues with balancing and things like that, got to remember which end was right. There we go. He has a very perfectly fitting stand right there. Once again, pegging on that back piece. Yeah, let me go ahead and tilt the camera up some. Okay, and boom, there we go. That is R2 in its powered up mode. Alright, and here we have um, R3, who once again also becomes R3 powered, which we'll go over after we take a look at the figure. Going ahead and giving you an overview here of the female pilot of the team. Very show accurate. That's one thing I really am impressed with, with the individual bots. Not super duper 2013 high end quality, but they are damn, 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 damn accurate. Now, her posability is pretty much just like R1 ball jointed head, shoulders. On the pivots here, so they don't have the up and down movement, but the under part swings in and out. Definite bicep swivel here. It does have the double jointed elbows. Okay. The fist, just like the rest of the characters, R1 and R2, have the pivot, the rotating, because they peg in rather than being on ball joints. Okay, she does not have waist swivel or any kind of waist movement at all. She does have thigh swing, ball jointed thighs. She actually has actual thigh swing. Okay. Double jointed knees as well. Okay, nice ratchet too. Hear that click. And the feet, definitely ball jointed. Okay. One thing that I had a problem with out of the box was I couldn't get her to stand up because I thought they were static, her feet. But you just got to push on them a little bit and get that initial loosen up. And then she actually poses just fine. And honestly, I just learned that before this review, funny enough. Now her um, thigh guards do move around here. Okay. She also comes with her booster packs, which peg into the back. Okay. Peg those on. All right. And also show accurate, she does have these weapons that peg into the side of those, and they do separate into separate pieces. 
Unfortunately, this doesn't come with, you know, stands for each part, but in the show, they would actually come apart and the separate pieces, you know, would shoot at people and stuff like that. Really cool stuff. All right. Peg that one in. Really tight peg here. And I like that because of the way that the feet do swing in and out and stuff like that. She's able to keep her balance even with all of this, I guess, junk on or stuff. Okay. Now, weapon-wise, she has her sword. And she also has her dual blaster here. Now, you could either have the handles alone pegged in, but since I was previously using it, I used the ones with the hands attached. Alright. So we'll go ahead and first I'm going to set her on her stand. Right, so see that. And it's nice. I love this peg-in weapon system. The way that the hands are just built on. Really nice. Really easy. You don't have to worry about anything falling out or anything like that. It just really works. Okay. You can see just like in the show. They stayed very accurate in terms of the size of this thing. Huge beam cannon there. But yeah, there we have um, R3. And let's go ahead and look at R3 powered. And all right, what you're seeing here is R3 powered. This is not the guest stall, but it's definitely one of the highlights of owning this kit. Um, like I said, it's very parts formery. Um, it's actually mostly the legs of the Gestalt that makes this back jet piece for. See if we can zoom out a little bit there. Alright. And just like in the show, she slides right in. while holding her long blaster forward. It's very nice that they threw this mold in. Seriously, it's incredible and says a lot about just how show accurate they wanted this set to be. Um, things like this, I mean, Jesus. It's an expensive set, but it makes me want to buy a second one just to display modes like this, as well as the Gestalt. Um, just really cool stuff. So yeah, um, I mean, it's basically her and side of a wing fortress, but um, it's, you know, if you've played the games, watched the anime, you know what's up with this, and even if you haven't, just realize, <laughs> as you can, or you can see that this thing is just out of this world. I really love R3 powered. So, yeah. Give you guys another view from the front here. Okay. And this mode does come with um, a separate stand of its own, actually. Which is really nice of them to throw in. But yeah. There is R3 powered.